This is the tale of a snail who disappeared 75 years ago. A so-called Lazarus species. It's geek talk for, uh, for you're finding something that everybody thought was extinct and dead. So you're resurrecting something and bringing it back from the dead. Finding an extinct species is extremely rare. They're usually in a really tightly located area, just a mile or two of habitat that remains. As precious as they are obscure, each has a fascinating story. And for the oblong rock snail, it's one of sweeping revival at the bottom of a river. In the spring of 2011, Nathan Whelan was a biology graduate student surveying invertebrates on the Cahaba River. It's, it's a beautiful river to kayak, uh, good flow. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the only rivers in Alabama that hasn't been uh, dammed and impounded. It was on a remote bend like this one that Nathan picked up a rock and hit the jackpot. Well, I, I picked up the first one and I, I, you know, I took a look at it and I was, you know, was looking at my hand and I was like, well, that looks pretty suspicious. I might, I might want to hold on to this one for a second. And you know, started picking up a couple other snails and you know, once I had two or three that looked, looked like what I was looking for, I started screaming, hey guys, you got to come down here and take a look at this. And I'm pretty sure they thought I was crazy. Nathan believed he'd found the oblong rock snail, a species that hadn't been seen since 1933. So, so we collected about 35 of them and brought them back uh, to the Alabama Aquatic Biodiversity Center. And showed them to Dr. Paul Johnson, the facility's director. I was a bit skeptical to say the least. I said, are you sure that you're not confused with another, another closer related species? He says, no, the, I've got him. But proving it wasn't simple, Whalen needed to go back to historic records and then compare his specimens to museum specimens. And trying to determine, you know, first does the shell even match? It did. But then also we started looking at the, uh, the internal anatomy, specifically the, the radulae, the snail teeth. Yes, snails have teeth. Well, sort of. Inside their mouths is a raspy strip called the radula, which they use to scrape surfaces for food. And in many species, the radula is distinctly shaped. Luckily for Whalen, the dental records matched. And sure enough, when I saw what he had, he certainly had identified it correctly. After a couple of molecular tests, just to be sure, the oblong rock snail was officially back. But this wasn't the end of its story. Five years later. We have uh, uh, several tanks full of these animals uh, that will be used for reintroduction efforts in other areas of the Cahaba River where the species used to occur. Nor is the oblong rock snail alone in its journey. Inside the tanks, tubs, and ponds at the Alabama Aquatic Biodiversity Center are a myriad of mollusks and fish, all looking to make a comeback. Currently we have Alabama creek mussel, Alabama rainbows, southern comb shells, Coosa moccasin shell, pale lilliput, Alabama pearl shells, orange nacre muckets. I, I know I'm forgetting uh, one or two species. And these are just a small portion of the biodiversity found at the bottom of Alabama's 10 distinct river basins. We have the highest biodiversity of freshwater mussels, uh, gastropods, and freshwater crayfish, not only in the nation, but globally. So Acusa River, the Cahaba River, the Tennessee River, each of those rivers will have unique species within them that don't occur in other basins. And just like the oblong rock snail, this makes them incredibly vulnerable. There's a tanker truck spill, there's some type of accident, and you can literally lose a species that is limited just to one or two miles. So the idea is that you actually pick these things up, we propagate them, we put them someplace else so that one single event would not eliminate the species. Now this may seem like a lot of fuss over a bunch of bottom dwellers, but with their recovery and federal listing as endangered species comes a much broader revival. This project is a very convoluted clean water project. We have 76 federally listed mollusks, mussels and snails combined, whose unique tributary or stretch of river gets monitored and protected. With those protections comes cleaner water. In the Cahaba River, for example, uh, they all expanded their ranges if they were federally listed because of the improvements from sewage wastewater treatment upgrades in Birmingham. And of course, the added benefits of the animals themselves. These animals literally are the river's vacuum cleaners. They are important grazers, so they you know, keep algae levels down. They serve as a food source to other animals. So if you like coming out here and seeing a, a, beautiful, a beautiful place like this, then you gotta have healthy invertebrates. It's a long, long road ahead for the oblong rock snail. But Dr. Johnson and Nathan Whalen think they'll get there eventually. 
For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.